Android launchers are a tough market to break through, especially since a lot of them have been around for ages. But recently, a new kit on the block has started to gain a lot of attraction due to its unique launcher layout and minimalistic design. I say recently, but they've really been around for over two years now. I'm talking about Niagara Launcher. I used it back when it first got released, but since then, it's gotten a ton of new features and just last month, it jumped out of beta. So, as I've done in the past with Launcher 2 and Hyperion Launcher, I wanted to compare it against everyone's top favorite choice, Nova Launcher. Let's see which one comes out on top. By the way, thanks to the developers of both Nova Launcher and Niagara Launcher, I'll be giving away a total of 40 promo codes on both my Twitter and Instagram at HowToMen in a couple of days, so if you want a chance at winning a pro version for each app for free, just follow me there. To be specific, that's 20 promo codes for Nova Launcher Prime and 20 promos for Niagara Pro. So again, thank you to the developers for allowing this giveaway to happen, so don't wait. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at HowToMen, because before you know it, they could already be gone. The links are in the description. Anyways, when looking to download either launcher, they're both free, so you don't need to worry about any initial payment. However, after you begin to use either one, you'll eventually find out that there are a couple of locked features, and the only way to unlock them is by paying for their premium version. I'll get into the pricing later on in this video, but for now, just know that Niagara Pro is a lot more expensive. Now, people who download Nova Launcher are either only downloading it because it's popular, or because it's arguably the most customizable launcher on the Play Store. On the other hand, Niagara Launcher provides more of a refresh. It started off as a flashlight app back in 2016, and then it slowly turned into a launcher with its first release being back in 2018. It's obtained over 2 million downloads so far, which is not nearly as close as what Nova Launcher has, but it's still impressive considering that Nova Launcher has been around for close to a decade now. And the reason for Niagara's success is because it's just different and easy to use. It's got a fresh new take on how your home screen should work and look, not following the typical Android launcher recipe. When booting into each launcher for the first time, I found Niagara to provide a more welcoming experience. It had a beautiful animation of their logo, and then it would allow you to select your favorite apps to include on the front page. You can also add as many as you'd like, but it recommends that you only select eight, otherwise your home screen will be an overwhelming list of apps, and when you try to swipe up to quickly access the search bar, you'll need to swipe multiple times. Afterward, it'll take you straight to the home screen where you'll get a few more tips and tricks so that you can fully take advantage of the launcher. When it comes to Nova Launcher, their newest 7.0 beta version that you can download off APK Mirror doesn't include any introduction. I'm sure they're working on including it, but assuming you're just downloading the stable version from the Play Store, you'll be able to set up a basic layout or use a Nova backup file to restore your previous home screen setup and settings if you used Nova in the past. Starting fresh lets you choose your preferred theme and app drawer style. Other than that, you're left to figure everything out on your own with no tips or tricks to assist you, unlike Niagara Launcher. Now both launchers are very different from one another. As most of you probably already know, Nova Launcher includes your typical swipe up app drawer, a dock if you choose to have one, pages filled with apps and widgets, and then a discover panel on the leftmost screen if you download their Nova Google Companion app separately. It's pretty basic stuff that we've seen ever since the beginning of Android, but it works and gets the job done for extreme customization. Niagara Launcher does it way differently though. It's a lot more minimal and less customizable, which can be a good thing if you don't want to get overwhelmed with a tons of bells and whistles. It doesn't follow the typical pixel launcher layout. Instead, it's more like an app drawer on steroids. It's just a single dynamic page that includes your time, date, battery percentage, weather info, and any upcoming events at the very top. Right below it, you can choose to add a widget that you can resize and slightly reposition. You can even replace the clock with the widget itself. It's honestly not a bad idea if you prefer a custom clock from a KWGT widget pack. Then below that, you have all of your favorite apps. If you swipe on either edge of the screen, you'll be able to scroll through all of your installed apps and it'll bring up a search button to find an app much more quickly. You can also just swipe up on the main screen to search for specific apps. Finally, you can enable a Google button, which works in different ways. Tapping it launches the Google app, swiping up on it lets you Google search anything, and then long pressing it brings up Google Assistant. Really nicely integrated. That's the skeleton of the launcher. It may take a while to get used to since no other launcher works the same way, but I like the refreshing idea. To top it off, it's also very ergonomic when trying to use it with one hand. In a single swipe and tap, I can launch any app I'd like, but this is also the same case with Nova Launcher. Especially with their 7.0 beta version, having swipe up to open the app drawer, enabled by default, 
and that I can also include the search bar at the bottom even when I'm in the app drawer. Both launchers do a solid job of making the interface easy to use with one hand. Now before I jump straight into the feature comparisons of each launcher, I wanted to give a shout out to dbrand for sponsoring this video. Just like installing a third party launcher to customize your home screen, why not also pick up a dbrand skin to customize the back of your phone? Not only will it make it look unique and fresh, but it also gives it a bit more grip and gets rid of those dirty fingerprint smudges on the back. Two of my favorite textures are the triple black icon skin, MKBHD edition, and the robot camo edition since from far away, they look pretty modern and professional, but up close, there's a lot more going on. Deepbrand also has plenty of other textures to choose from for plenty of other devices. And if you prefer the extra protection, you can instead pick up a grip case. They're very heavy duty and live up to the name of being the grippiest case that I've ever held. To top it off, they're also customizable since you can slap a skin on the back of it. Oh, and they're also selling masks now, which honestly look very clean and stealthy. So if you're interested in a mask, skin, or grip case, go to dbrand.com slash how to check them out. That's dbrand.com slash how to men. The link is in the description. Now for the performance of the launchers, they're both very fast and fluid. They both open apps very quickly and even with the Android OS, making it harder for third party launchers to work properly with the navigation gestures, they both still handle launching apps and opening the recents menu much better than most other launchers. Nova Launcher 7.0 does handle it a little better though, since it even provides a transition animation when you jump into the recents menu. But when considering the performance of each launcher, they're both on the same level. For efficiency though, I think Nova Launcher is the better option since it does allow you to see more apps at once with a single swipe when you jump into the app drawer. By default, it's in a grid format, so you can easily spot out an app much more quickly than if it were in a list format. With Niagara Launcher, you only get to see around 12 apps with each swipe, and you also need to remember the name of the app, otherwise you're just sitting there swiping your finger up and down, hoping that you didn't accidentally scroll past it. Plus, if you prefer the list style, Nova Launcher still allows you to enable it within the settings. Hell, they even allow you to have a horizontal app drawer like the one found on Samsung's One UI Home. There are a ton of other features that Nova Launcher has and Niagara doesn't. Some of them might even surprise you. Nova Launcher supports the use of multiple widgets. Yep, you heard that right. As of now, Niagara doesn't support multiple widgets. Like I said before, it only allows you to have one and that's it. However, when I reached out to them about those promo codes, they also let me know that they're working on supporting more widgets in the app actions when you swipe on an icon. I'm not exactly sure when that's gonna be released though, but we can't expect it in the future. The only workaround is to download a separate app like Pop-Up Widget 3 or Panels, but the average user isn't going to want to go through that process. Niagara Launcher also doesn't support folders or the Google Discover panel. You can group apps together by swiping right on the app's icon, tapping the pencil icon, and then choosing apps to throw into that menu, but you won't see a folder icon that gives you a glimpse at what type of apps are inside that folder. And it's already filled with a ton of the app shortcuts, so it can get cluttered real easily. Again, the creator of Niagara let me know that they're also experimenting with different folder slash categorization systems. Those three things are probably the biggest reasons why most people wouldn't want to download Niagara Launcher. Well, that and the lack of support for customization. That's not to say that Niagara is completely bland like a stock launcher. It does allow you to customize the icons with the support for an icon pack, change the icon shape and icon size. You can also change the font and even use a custom one by selecting a font file. They have a wallpaper collection that is way better than the one found on Nova. You can hide certain items like the status bar, apps, or app names, and they support Sesame Universal Search. But that's pretty much it. Aside from the custom font support, Nova Launcher has all that and more. You can customize the grid layout within both the app drawer and home screen. You can change the app animation when launching an app or returning to the home screen. Choose whether you want to use dark icons in the status bar or not. Niagara Launcher does allow you to do this automatically, but depending on the wallpaper that you use, it doesn't always work correctly, so a manual option is still a much better option. I can add more options within the pop-up menu, such as saving the APK or relaunching the app, so I don't have to force close it within its app infos page. There's also an undo button that saved me plenty of times when accidentally removing an app or widget from the home screen, and I get that Niagara doesn't really need an undo button, but it's still a really awesome feature that I wanted to point out. Now, Nova Launcher also supports a lot more gestures with a ton more actions. Within the night mode menu, you can also individually choose what items within the launcher should become dark and which ones shouldn't. And you can schedule the dark mode. Niagara Launcher only lets you turn it on or off within its settings. That's just the tip of the iceberg though. Nova Launcher is obviously way more customizable than Niagara, 
Plus, it's not even mentioning that you can remove everything from the home screen and add blank pages, which most launchers don't even support, by the way, and I'm not sure why. It's extremely useful for those who like to use a KLWP Live wallpaper. Niagara Launcher does say that they support it within its settings, but in reality, um, it's a bit complicated since it looks like you have to code things and ain't nobody got time for that, okay? But there are a couple of valuable features that Niagara Launcher has and Nova Launcher doesn't. Plus, they really know how to seamlessly integrate most of them without having them be intrusive, having them be easily accessible, and only having them pop up when they're needed, all while keeping the interface looking clean and minimal. For example, whenever I play a song in the background, a music player pops up so that I can control my music. It then disappears when I close the app that is playing the sound, or I just swipe it away. Another unique feature that Niagara has is embedded notifications. This feature directly plugs any incoming notifications to this corresponding app, whether it's on its homepage or in the app drawer. That way you can directly check your notifications from your home screen without needing to drop down your notification panel. And that's not even the best part. If the notification is a text message or a DM, you can even respond directly from the home screen by just swiping on the app's icon. On the flip side, Nova Launcher does show notifications in an app's pop-up menu, but it doesn't let you directly reply to messages. Another feature that Nova doesn't have and I thought was pretty smart is music apps. It allows me to select a set of apps to show up on the home screen whenever I connect to my Bluetooth headphones or speaker. For example, when I connect to my car's Bluetooth speaker, I can have certain apps like Google Maps, Spotify, or even a podcast app slide up to the top of my favorite section, making them easily accessible. Then when I disconnect, those apps disappear. Another thing, if you tap on the date right below the clock, you can also have an agenda that shows you an hourly weather forecast, any upcoming calendar events, and the weather forecast for the next seven days. And finally, even though a small group of people will actually find this to be useful, you can take a transparent screenshot of your current home screen setup without including your wallpaper. It can come in handy for anyone who's trying to showcase their icons or widgets. All you need to do is type forward slash screenshot in the search bar and a button will appear letting you take transparent screenshots just by tapping it. So even though Niagara Launcher isn't as feature packed as Nova Launcher, it can still do a lot of things that Nova Launcher can. Plus it integrates its features much more seamlessly. Now let's compare pricing. As I said at the beginning of the video, both launchers have a premium version to unlock even more features. When you get the pro version of Niagara, you get full access to the agenda menu and weather forecast, the feature where you can swipe on an app to open its shortcuts or similar apps, custom fonts, sesame integration to make the search function universal, the music apps feature where you can bring up specific apps when you connect to a Bluetooth device, their icon pack, which is really just a bunch of dots, the option to lock your phone by double tapping on the alphabet, and the option to hide your status bar. Those are all the features that you unlock and it's honestly a good amount of stuff, but it can be a bit pricey for the average Joe. Even though prices may vary by country, in America you can either use their subscription plan with a seven day free trial and then afterward you'll be charged $5.99 per year. Or you can also just pay once with a higher price of $14.99. I was even reading up on their blog that in the future they may include a third option for paying a monthly subscription of just a dollar. On the contrary, Nova Launcher Prime is surprisingly a lot cheaper where you only need to pay $4.99 once. It may not unlock as many features, but that's actually a good thing because that just means most of its features are already free to begin with. When you get Nova Launcher Prime, you can unlock custom gesture controls, the option to create custom tabs or folders in the app drawer. You'll be able to hide apps, assign swipe gestures to home screen icons and folders, have custom scrolling effects, and unread counts on any icon. It's a good variety of options that don't force the user to get their Prime version by locking any basic features. So the big question that you've been waiting for is, which is the better launcher, Niagara Launcher or Nova Launcher? Well, this obviously comes down to personal opinion, but I'm gonna be sticking with Nova Launcher. Not because it's quote unquote better, but just because it's a lot more customizable. I'm the type of guy who constantly wants to change the look of his home screen and stay on top of the newest personalization apps. So with Niagara Launcher, I feel like I'm limited to a large extent, especially since it doesn't fully support multiple widgets, folders, or even KLWP Live wallpapers. Those three things are a huge setback for me. Once they do update the app to at least support multiple widgets, or even folders, I'll give them another shot. Still, that's not to say that I wouldn't recommend them. I would recommend this launcher to anyone who's looking for something refreshing and simple to use, someone who doesn't depend on widgets or doesn't want to change the look of their home screen that much. 
It's effortless to use with one hand, and it integrates its features very seamlessly while still keeping a very minimal layout. Plus, once they bring in multiple widget support and a better folder system, there's a possibility that I may make the switch. Either way, that's my comparison of Niagara Launcher and Nova Launcher. If you liked what you saw, please do me a favor and drop a thumbs up on this video. It honestly helps out the channel a lot. If you also like to go above and beyond, please get subscribed with the notification bell turned on. I release videos just like this every week, and you definitely don't want to miss out. Don't forget to check out those sick looking skins, grip cases, or masks from Dbrand by going to dbrand.com slash howtoman. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at howtoman for a chance of winning those 40 promo codes, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!